Good day, YouTubers. Welcome to episode 5 of the series on Central Moreton Bay. In this episode, I'm going to cover the Small Ships Passage, the Rouse Channel, and Fisherman's Gutter. Now, these areas are really good areas for whiting, but you'll also get a lot of other species in there. You'll pull out some really good snapper, sweet lip, blue bone, pull out some big barracuda out of there. Skill mackerel are often present there. You'll occasionally find the spotties there. Basically, the area is full of surprises. You never quite know what you're going to get, but fair chance of getting something. In the last episode, I went up along the Rainbow Channel to Amity. In this episode, I'm going a little bit further to the west, and I'm going to go along the Rouse Channel. I'm starting this in the Small Ships Passage, because that's one of the main entries into the Rouse Channel, and of particular note is the West Amity Green Zone. Very important to know where that one is. The Small Ships Passage is somewhere that I mainly fish for whiting and I prefer to do that up on the chain bank side because that keeps me well clear of the green zone. However, there are whiting down along the maroon banks but you just need to be careful that you're not fishing in the green zone. And as I've been saying in nearly every video, that includes making sure that you're not casting into the green zone, even if your boat is outside the green zone. I've marked the areas where I generally fish for whiting in the small ships channel with a yellow line. Along the chain banks, you can go all the way out to the green beacon at the entrance if you want to, but I generally just fish about half the length of the chain banks and find that's pretty good. Fishing the marine banks was a lot easier to do before they put the green zone in, but you can still do it as long as you just make sure you stay outside the green zone. Anywhere from the yellow buoy at the beginning of the small ships channel up to the entrance to the rouse channel should produce whiting. I have also trolled down the small ships passage from time to time. I do this mainly when the rouse isn't producing any mackerel. I'll move down into the small ships passage to see if there's any down there. I troll this a little bit differently, I don't go out to the edges of the banks. I do it this way because there's no steep drop-offs on the edges of this passage and the deeper water is more or less in the centre, so I tend to stay more or less in the centre. I generally find some smaller ones, I won't say I catch anything as big as I normally get in the Rouse Channel, but you get some keepers and you get a few that you've got to throw back. That's if they're there at all. On the other side of the green zone is the maroon hull. The general depth of that channel down the eastern side of the green zone is around a couple of metres, two to three metres, something like that. But when you get down to the maroon hull, you'll find it drops down to or somewhere between four and eight metres. Just in sort of isolated little holes, there's more than one of them as I recall. And you just want to drift through that area. Now, it's best done if you've got a wind that drifts you down the axis of the highlight area that I've drawn there over the maroon hole. But if you haven't got the right wind, I would either anchor up so I didn't go into the green zone, or if you're lucky enough to have a mincoder, set up your mincoder to take you up and down the axis of that area. Just be aware that you really need to stay out of that green zone. It is pretty much up against the edge of where the maroon hole is. I put an arrow on the map to show where there's a yellow beacon. As long as you stay east of that beacon on a line that runs north northeast to south southwest, you should be outside the green zone. But by far the best option is to have a GPS with you that has the green zones marked on it. So you make sure you stay outside them. And finally, in this area, you can fish all the way down that passage that takes you to the maroon hole, all the way down, in fact, to the yellow beacon. However, I generally just fish the area where the yellow line is marked. If you're going to fish all the way down it, I suggest you only fish the eastern side of that passage because the green zone is hard up against the western side of it. You can get in from the south, I've taken the tender off the big boat through the south of that into that area. It was a long time ago, so I don't really remember how deep it was. I think you'd get through all right with a larger boat. But again, memory is a little bit hazy on the depth of that water. It was fine for a tinny when I went through. Don't know that I was at low tide, but I had no problems anyway. Generally, though, when I go through to fish that area, it's been from the Rouse Channel end, either in a tinny or a small trailer boat. 
So as usual in these sort of areas, if you're new to it, just take it easy, keep an eye on your sounder, you shouldn't have any problem, there is a nice passage down through there. And finally I'll just mention that while the small ship's channel isn't really considered an anchorage, it is possible to anchor there overnight. There's just a few rules you've got to remember. If it's low tide and you're in the small ship's channel and you're sheltered from the swell, as soon as it becomes high tide and the water covers those banks, most of that swell's going to come in and you will roll. So rule of thumb is, if you're uncomfortable outside the small ship's channel, you will be uncomfortable inside the small ship's channel at high tide. At low tide you'll be fine. So if it's low tide in the middle of the night and you can put up with a bit before and after that, all good. If in doubt, I generally find that up in the Rouse Channel a bit further can be smoother overnight. Before we go any further, we'll just have a quick look at the travel times. All of these times go from the boat ramp to the Rouse Knob, just as a sort of central area to take the distance and times to. Bear in mind that I've calculated all these on my boat's performance, which is 20 knots cruising speed and about 23 litres per hour. My actual fuel consumption is closer to 20 litres per hour, but I always allow at least another 10% on that, just to make up for when the sea state's a bit rough and you use more fuel, and I always allow at least 20% remaining in the tank when I return back. Again, make sure that things go bad, or I don't run out of petrol. I do like to have more than 20%, but 20% is a bare minimum for me. Also remember that you're the captain of the boat and it is totally your responsibility to make sure that you have enough fuel for your trip and keep your passengers safe. Well, one of the main entrances to the Rouse Channel on the southern slash western end is the Small Ships Passage. There's another entrance a little bit to the north of that between the Rouse Light and the Red Beacon. I use that if I'm coming from Harry's or the Fowl Ground or anywhere up north towards Morton. And of course it's also an exit if you're heading out to any of those areas. I've put a mark in for the Rouse Knob, that's one of the main underwater features there, you can't miss it on the sounder. Comes up quite shallow and drops off on most sides. When I'm there I generally sound around look for the fish. For the most part I'd say that the fish up on top of the Rouse Knob are the smaller ones. You want a fish to drop off surround it, I've found to produce a better fish. I've also found that it's extremely difficult to get a drift line through there. It seems the current sort of swirls around the knob and every time I set up a drift I go in a different direction. Having a mincator has been the answer for me. I can spot lock on wherever I want to or move in whatever direction I want to. I'm not saying it's impossible to set up a drift line through there, I'm just saying that I can't manage it. So by all means, give it a go if you think you can do it. I put some yellow lines where I normally fish for whiting. You can fish for whiting along any of the sandbanks in the Rouse Channel, but these are the areas that I've generally fished over the years. Some of the other areas there may produce better whiting, more whiting, but these ones have worked for me. Get a bit of bycatch in there as well. The old stingray or shovel nose shark will give you a good fight, especially if you catch them on light whiting gear. In this slide I've marked the main area that I trolled for mackerel, pretty much from the Rouse Knob down to the Green Beacon that marks the centre of the first bend. That's where I usually pick up most of the mackerel. I troll the edges around the drop-offs. I will zigzag across the channel. If I'm not picking up something on one edge, I'll zig across to the other edge and troll along it for a while. Maybe go back to the original edge if I'm not doing any good there either. You know, some days it just doesn't produce, some days it does. You just got to move around a little bit and see if the fish are sitting somewhere differently on the particular day you're there. Just the same as fishing anywhere else. If I'm having a particularly bad day trolling, I'll extend the trolling area out towards the Rouse Light. The drop-offs aren't as large along that area, but there's deepish water and sometimes the fish can be holding out there. Again, as I mentioned in the small ships channel, on average this area produces smaller fish than the main area that I troll. But when they're few and far between, you've got to try and pick up what you can as long as they're legal size. In this final slide for fishing in the Rouse, I've got the red line around the Rouse knob. That sort of marks a drop off area around the Rouse knob, so it's no good going to the GPS mark and just fishing on it. You need to go to the GPS mark and sound around to find out where you want to fish near the knob. 
as I said before, fish to drop off. The red line to the southwest of that, there's a drop off there that I often stop at or slow down and sound that area as I'm going through the channel because there's often a lot of fish hanging around that drop off. And finally, there's the red line that I've marked just outside the channel at the Rouse Light. Now normally I go flying out there and wouldn't even consider anything, but since I've had the better sounders, I go flying out there and sometimes the sounders just lit up with fish. So now I will slow down at the Rouse Light and keep an eye on the sounder and go out. I've only done it a couple of times because I've only had the really good sounders for a little while and I've only pulled up some mackerel. When I say only, I like mackerel, so that's no problem. But I haven't found anything other than mackerel there when I've seen the sounder lit up. And I haven't done it often enough to know whether it's somewhere you'd want to sort of concentrate on just to troll for mackerel. But it's certainly somewhere that you want to keep an eye on the sounder just to see what's there as you go through. And just to prove that you never stop learning things about Moreton Bay, I've been on the bay for 55, maybe a bit more years. And within the last 18 months, I guess, I've learned that this area that I've marked in the Rouse Channel is called the Mount Cotton Reach. I'd never heard it called that before. I just called it the area south of the Rouse Knob. Apparently it's called the Mount Cotton Reach. And I've done the best I can to mark it off the way it was explained to me. The southern end may not be quite right, but it sort of extends from the Rouse Knob down towards that uh, yellow beacon. And I marked it out towards the east a bit more because that sort of covers the area that I've had a lot of success trolling in. I think that's more or less the area that they're talking about. It seems to be a sort of an ambiguous area, but basically just there. Apart from fishing, the other thing that the Rouse is useful for is as a thoroughfare to the South Passage Bar, to Amity or to the southern end of Morton around Day's Gutter. Up on the eastern side of the Rouse Channel, as the beacons are marked, they go on a big horseshoe to the north of the yellow line that I've marked there. However, a couple of years, maybe three years ago, someone took me out and said, oh, you don't need to follow around that horseshoe area, which I had always done. You can go straight through. So that's what I've been doing ever since. It certainly cuts off a lot of time going up around that horseshoe. And the water there is really good. I've even seen some beacons there, so it must be a marked channel now, although when it was shown to me, I don't recall him saying anything about beacons. We just chuffed off through there and there was plenty of water. Might be a bit hard to tell just from my line once you get out there whereabouts it is. So if you don't see any markers and you're not sure what you're doing, I do suggest you follow the markers that you can see up around that horseshoe. But if you're there at low tide and you're not sure, take it real slow. Keep an eye on the water. You'll, you can see the channels, the water's clear. You'll, once you find your way through once, you won't have any trouble after that. The Rouse is considered a reasonable overnight anchorage on a calm night. I wouldn't use it if it was really rough because as the sandbanks cover up, the swell will come across, although it won't be as bad as being outside the Rouse. So if you don't mind a little bit of a roll while you're asleep, the Rouse is a good choice. If it's glassed out, the Rouse is a great choice. But if it's rough outside the Rouse and you're getting a bit of roll coming into the Rouse, then there are better anchorages around and it's probably a good idea to go looking for one. The other main fishing area in the immediate vicinity of the Rouse Channel is Fisherman's Gutter and that's justifiably famous for catching whiting. There's two main entrances to the gutter. Just north of the entrance to the Rouse Channel is a couple of beacons which mark the western entrance. It is a bit shallow through there, but you should have no trouble getting in there with a six or seven metre boat. On the eastern side, I come in from the Rouse Knob. There's no beacons there, but if you just keep your eye on the sandbanks, you'll be able to thread your way through there all right. My boat's a 6.2 metre boat, and I've had no trouble getting in and out of there. You can, of course, run aground if you go over the wrong part of the sandbank, but as I said, water's pretty clear. Keep your eyes peeled and just follow the darker water. You should not have any trouble. If you're new to the area, a little bit nervous or something like that, just go really, really slow. 
and try to do it on a rising tide. So if you do come unstuck, you've only got a little time to wait before the tide lifts you back off. As for the fishing in there, anywhere along the yellow lines that are marked is likely to hold whiting. It does no harm to try any of them, but I generally do have sort of a favourite area that's central in those marks, and I've shaded that in this next slide. Here you can see the shaded area of the fisherman's gutter. That's where I normally drift, or try to drift anyway. Doesn't matter which way the wind's blowing, you'll find some way of drifting along that. If the wind's going, say, straight east to west, I'll try and drift the southern end line, which takes me along the sandbank, which is roughly running east-west. If the wind's blowing north-south, then I just go up to either the north or the south side of the gutter and drift across it. I generally find that the bite sort of peters out a little bit towards the middle if you're drifting north-south, but then it picks up again as you get closer to the other bank. And that's really all there is to say about Fisherman's Gutter. Good spot to go for whiting. The baits I've found that work there are anything, basically worms, squid tentacles, prawns maybe not so much, yabbies work, pippies work. And just recently I have gotten into trying lures. I haven't fished lures in the past, but in the last couple of years I wanted to get outside my comfort zone. So I was in Fisherman's Gutter a few months back and I tried with lures. Didn't find any whiting there on that particular day, but I did have a lot of fun catching pike on lures. Well, that finishes this episode. If you hadn't guessed already, this is one of my favourite fishing areas in the bay. In fact, it's one of my favourite areas to overnight in when it's a nice calm night. There's plenty of fish around, you get all sorts of species, you get all your bread and butter species, you get your reef species, and you get your pelagics. What more could you ask for? There's also a lot of wildlife around to entertain you. Plenty of dolphins go through. You'll see dugongs, you'll see turtles. You, if you're lucky, you might even see a manatee. In the next episode, I'm going to start at the top end of the rouse and just do the southern end of Morton Island, and then I'll start to work west back across the bay. I hope you're enjoying this series, I hope you're getting some new ideas for fishing spots and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel because it's having subscribers that encourages me to do these videos. Don't forget to click that like button. Until next time, good fishing.